Good evening. I'm going to call to order the January 7th Council meeting. And would you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And item number three is roll call. Councilor Baybine? Present. Councilor Donovan? Here. Councilor Hayes? Here. Council Blaze? Here. Council Chair Holbrook? And I am here as well. Um, both Jean Marie, Katharina, and um, Councilor Kate Sinclair are home with the flu, and Mr. Hall is just returning to us from <laughs> having, the having the flu. Um, so item number four is general public comments. And before we dive into that, I did just want to um, ask, there is a young man here with us tonight, um, that is working on his merit badge for his Boy Scout. So if you would like to come on up to the podium. I just want to say my name is Zach Harrison. I'm from uh, Boy Scout Troop 47 here in Scarborough, and I'm coming here to work on my communication merit badge. Hmm. And thank you for letting me join oh. or be a part of this meeting. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. All right. And... As usual, with public, general public comments, you have three minutes. If anybody would like to come to the podium and speak and state your name, address in there as three minutes. And, which is great, we're going to have a short meeting. We'll close general public comments. And item number five is minutes of the December 17th regular meeting. Is there a motion? Move approval. Second. And is there any discussion, errors, omissions? All right. And all those in favor? That is unanimous. There are no adjustments to the agenda. And so we move to item number seven, which is items to be signed, treasurer warrants, which I will do later in the evening, which brings us right to number eight, non-action items. We have a presentation from the Maine Department of Labor to present the Town of Scarborough with the SHAPE Award. And joining us to, to do that would be Mike LaPlante and Stephen Greeley, if I'm not mistaken. So if you wouldn't mind, please come up and talk to us a little bit about what we did to get the SHAPE Award. Well, my name is Mike LaPlante. I'm a, a manager with the Workplace Safety and Health Division of Maine Department of Labor. Um, some of you have probably heard of us. We have the, uh, the famous enforcement division that shows up unannounced and does the OSHA inspections, which is a hugely popular program, as you can <laughs> And uh, we're quite good at what we do. Um, but uh, back in 2005, our former director uh, kind of copied a program from Federal OSHA, which was called SHARP. Uh, there's always people in the private sector, employees in the private sector, that were doing a very good job going out of their way to follow the regulatory text to protect their people. And our boss, uh, his name was Dave Wacker, at that time decided to start what they call the SHAPE program, which is the Safety and Health Awards for Public Employers. It's an R&D. We basically call it a ripoff and duplicate of the federal program. But whenever we find an employer that we feel uh, is trying to do what they need to do to comply, uh, and there are those out there, um, we suggest they get into this, what we call the SHAPE program. And basically, in a nutshell, it, it requires uh, scrutinizing your injury records to see if there's opportunities to help. Uh, we calculate your injury records and, and compare them to other employers of similar type in the state. So your injury records right off the bat have to be at or below the state average for other cities and towns. We'll come in, we'll, do, uh, we'll look at all the written programs of all the departments, uh, training records, equipment inspections, facility walks, and I'm sure that some of the folks in the sidelines can probably attest that it was, it was a process. But anything worthwhile generally is. So if, if an employer gets into the program, their entry rates look good, and we go in and do a wall-to-wall, -wall, give them a chance to correct, and they do, we get to this point. We're here tonight to uh, award uh, the town of uh, Scarborough, excuse me, uh, the coveted Safety and Health Award for public employers. And though this is number 40, there's 44 employers as of tonight in this program since 2005, so we don't give these out lightly. Um, I think Scarborough is the sixth, if I recall, employer that has done all town departments, uh, which it's, I was talking with the chief earlier, it's, it's sometimes easier for a smaller employer to 
get in less injuries, less employees. So a town of this size is actually, I think, monumental. I think it's probably the biggest town that we've got to date. It's only six in the state that have done every single department, uh, which, is, which is a big deal. So, and, and I'm going to, like I step away just for a sec. We have uh, letters from our uh, commissioner and director and Steve, basically, in a nutshell, covering what, sorry, Steve, covering the basic stuff that we look at, and there should be a bunch of them for you to give out. Um, so I'm going to just pass the uh, podium over to my boss, Steve Greeley. Well, first of all, congratulations. Um, you know, as, as Mike uh, mentioned, as far as the, um, the uh, Workplace Safety and Health Division, uh, you know, we do have the enforcement piece, so we are the OSHA for the public sector. But as he mentioned, we also have the Popular Safety Works piece, which is consultation for public and, and private uh, sector uh, uh, companies. Uh, Mike had mentioned the SHARP program. In the state of Maine right now, we have 68 private uh, sites that are SHARP certified. And if you were to look at the rest of Region 1, which encompasses the six New England states, uh, we have more SHARP sites in Maine than the other five states combined. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's a very active, uh, active program. And uh, Mike had mentioned about our, my predecessor, Dave uh, Wacker, who had started the SHAPE program. Uh, there has been some discussion with Connecticut and also Massachusetts about doing something similar for the public sector in, in those states. Um, but, uh, and actually, I had discussions probably a month or so ago with a person from Massachusetts that would actually like to keep the same name so they could kind of maybe grow the program so it's more of a recognizable name uh, throughout New England. But to date, Maine's the only one in New England that, that does this. And as Mike mentioned, we're at 44, 44 locations. Um, the, um, the Shape Award and probably the, uh, and there's a lot of work involved to, to, to to achieve this and to be, as Mike mentioned, a town your size to get this is, is phenomenal. The, um, but it, but it, I always feel like when I get to this point, I'm kind of moving the finish line on you. I mean, it's like, okay, let's celebrate tonight. This is a great achievement. But these little plates at the bottom of the, the plaque are for renewal. So, you know, celebrate tonight, <laughs> but starting tomorrow morning, uh, the work continues. So uh, I'm not sure who to present this plaque to, but uh, again, congratulations. Is there um Okay. And, and on behalf of the, the governor's office and, and my commissioner's office and so on, uh, usually we have a few more people in attendance from, from the Department of Labor, uh, but as you know, the uh, the uh, inauguration was tonight for the uh, for the governor and my commissioner and my bureau director are, are at that event. So uh, again, like I said, they they do send uh, you know you know their best wishes as well. But uh, unfortunately, they weren't able to make it tonight. If you what you'd like, come have you come come right up here and yeah, we'll get out of your way. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're the fourth. <laughs> I did mention getting into this program <coughs> gets you out of the enforcement program unless something unfortunate happens. So as long as the town stays into the program, you've eliminated yourself from enforcement activities unless something happens out of the ordinary. So the challenge is on. Keep it going. So 
And, it, and that's, that's, I think, the big positive. You don't get to see my folks. So. I just wanted to say I've not been on the front line of this, but uh, during my tenure I know this has been a constant battle for our, our, our goal of staff and, and a challenge, frankly. And mm -hmm. we very much appreciate uh, Mike's work and patience with us. And it's really the folks in, this, in attendance right. here tonight that have had the perseverance and the tenacity to see this through. So now that we've reached the hurdle, uh, we hope that renewal will be far easier. Uh, than, than getting this award, and I appreciate um, how you've come out and celebrated that with us. Easier to maintain it than let it go behind, so, so it all, it's all good. And it's, it is a big deal to us, and I know it is to you, so thank you again, folks. Thank uh, you. Great, thank you. And fantastic and wonderful job to, to really our town staff. That, that's, this is you. It's not anybody else other than it's, it's you. So congratulations and good job. It's great leadership. Thank you. All right. My name is Lance Lemieux. I'm from uh, Maine Municipal Association. I'm the loss control consultant that works with the town. And Five years ago, this whole process started with them. I did there. I used to work for the Department of Labor, and uh, I wasn't sure they were going to get to this point. And when I got the email a few weeks ago or last month that they were going to get the award, I was very excited. I think you don't mind me picking on the Public Works. I went to the Public Works that first time. I think <laughs> I had 83 violations. <laughs> oh, and I just shook my head. And I said, oh, okay, but. They should be, we should be very proud of them. They've done a great job. Uh, where the town has gotten the entire, all departments in the town have gotten the shape award or in the program, uh, you get a 3% discount on your workers' comp premiums, uh, contributions, I'm sorry. So, great job. And Good. Don't worry, I won't let them lapse. You'll get all the <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Good. Okay. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move on to our next order of business, which will be order number 15-001 is 7 p.m. public hearing in action on the request for a liquor license from Happy Buddha, Inc., doing business at JSN, located at 456 Payne Road. All right, and this is a public hearing. Is there anybody that wishes to speak on this item? All right, seeing none, pleasure of the council. Move approval. Second. And is there any discussion? All right. Seeing none, all those in favor? All right. Under old, no, go ahead. Under old business, order number 15002 is act on the names that were posted to the various committees and boards that were posted at the last town council meeting by the appointments committee. Comment. Don't, don't comment. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Is there anybody that wishes to speak? All right. Seeing none, opportunity lost is... Move approval. Second. And any discussion? All right. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Right. On to the next one. Under new business order number 15003 is the first reading and scheduled public hearing on the proposed amendments to Chapter 702, the Town of Scarborough Street Opening Ordinance. All right. And is there anybody here that wishes to speak on that item? And seeing none, pleasure of the council. Move approval. Second. And any discussion? I have a question. The, the um, largest substantive piece that I saw was the increase in the premium, uh, increase in the liability coverage. And I was wondering what was the driving force behind. I think it was increasing from three million to four million dollars in liability coverage. Mike Shaw is the architect of this. I, I would mention, uh, in the absence of Councilor St. Uh, Kate St. Clair, who's the chairperson of the Ordinance Committee, this matter was taken up and approved by the Ordinance Committee at their last meeting is before you now. So Mike can answer your question. I believe that the is it, it goes it went from three hundred thousand to four hundred thousand. Oh I'm, I might have read too many. Okay. <laughs> it, and and that's simply just a function of tort liability. Okay. Um and, and, and the amount of coverage that, that the town needed to be uh, indemnified against. So that was that was that. And then the other piece, while I'm up here, the 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 other, um, the last time that ordinance had been updated was 1996. So the one of the other bigger pieces in there is 
Uh, at that time, the dig safe means dig safe law was not in effect. It is now. So the, 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 there was wordsmith yeah. to change that as well. So that was okay. another big piece of that. Thank you. Can, can I ask you, um, just to cut it quickly, um, I did attend this meeting, but I don't recall. <laughs> I was only a viewer. I didn't have to know everything. But would you mind, um, in, where, with Kate's evidence, if you could just kind of go over briefly what the highlights were. I, it was mostly of... Sure. The, 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 the highlights, uh, the, the, the bigger pieces were the, was the change in the tort liability limits of uh, li uh, coverage. Um, there was the, also there is a piece in there about the dig safe, which is, I think, one of the larger pieces. Um, and then beyond that, uh, there was removal. At one time, we, the, the, the ordinance spoke of um, the actual public works doing, doing repair work at, at, the, uh, at the request of, of a contractor mm -hmm. that was doing street opening. As a practical matter, uh, we never did that prior to, prior to me showing up there. We certainly haven't done it since. Um, you know, the, anybody that is doing a street opening and is actually breaking pavement and so forth is a contractor of, of size and, and ability that they're going to want to do their own uh, repairs and, and restorations, and that's the way we would want it anyway. So um, it was just it was a matter of a, it was a lot of house cleaning uh, in the ordinance when I did the updates as well. So. Okay. All right. Any other questions or discussion? Just the, so that everyone who's kind of watching. This is uh, updating an ordinance that deals with excavating in public ways. Correct. And it, just so with, that with, with it within the town's right of way, yes. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah, I think that was could have been lost on people watching. Thank you, Bill. And anything else? No other discussion? <laughs> no other questions? All right, thank you very much, Mr. Thank Shaw. You. Thank you. All right, um, so this is first reading and schedule a public hearing. So we have a first and a second. All those in favor? And that is unanimous. Order number 15004 is act on the request to appoint the town clerk as registrar of voters pursuant to the Title 21A Main Revised Statute, subsection 101.2. And this is just a, every two years the state requires us to appoint the registrar of voters. So. <coughs> Before you. Thank you, Tony, for always doing this. <laughs> Is there anybody that wishes to speak on this item? And seeing none, in the pleasure of the council. Move approval. Second. All right. And any discussion? All right. And seeing none, all those in favor? All right. So now we are on to standing in special committee reports and liaison reports. And we'll go ahead and start on the sense with Sean. So a um, couple items. One, Finance Committee was to have met um, this past uh, week. We were not able to do that. Um, and this was the joint uh, meeting with the School Board's Finance Committee because of some absences and illnesses. So uh, we're in the process of rescheduling that joint meeting. Uh, tentatively, we have set the first meeting of the, finance, the Town Council's Finance Committee for January 14th at 4 here in uh, Chambers. It's a very light agenda in which we're reviewing the fiscal year end um, internal reports and then we should hopefully have at least a, um, a draft timeline uh, for discussion as well. Um, the town is currently in the midst of its audit uh, with the auditors so uh, we're taking it a little light um, at, the, at the moment to uh, ease uh, their, uh, their schedules. Um, did want to mention um, I attended SEDCO, so I don't know who to report, but Mr. Donovan and I both attended the last SEDCO meeting. Uh, the January 15th meeting has been canceled um, in the schedule, uh, but there are several other uh, activities that are going on in supporting them. And then um, also Eco Main, uh, their next meeting is January 15th. No. Yes, 15th. And so uh, I should be able to attend that with Mr. Shar as well. So those are my reports. Thank you very much. And Mr. Donovan? Uh, the SEDCO meeting was the only one which I attended, and I think Councillor Baybine has adequately covered it. Okay. And <coughs> Mr. Blaze? Um, the only meeting that I went to was the, it was a planning board meeting this, this past Monday. And uh, the FOSH organization did get up and <coughs> present a you want to call it a sketch plan or something like that. And the planning board was <coughs> very interested in the location and 
gave them quite a bit of direction as to what they expect to see in forthcoming uh, reviews. It's going to—it's not an easy piece of land, and uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of pressure to make sure it's done correctly. So that's all I got. And Mr. Hayes. <laughs> Mine will be very short again. The, the committees I'm on have, be, between the holidays and cancellations, have not met, but they will be meeting next week, so I'll have some updates okay. the next time around. All right. And off to me, which is, um, as you can see, the first, one of first leg of historic preservation was here in front of us tonight. Um, they met last night, and I'm sure they will take all the feedback that they received tonight and have something for us possibly for, for next month for a first reading. Um, Housing Alliance did need to change their meeting. Um, they will not be meeting tomorrow. It's been rescheduled, I believe that's Thursday, January 15th, next week. And um, they'll be taking up several several items um, in discussion on some of the other goals that we've talked about that, that were coming in pieces. We recently, as a council, changed um, the percentage thresholds that we have for definitions. Um, they'll also be looking at some of um, looking into other zoning as far as um, expanding some of those affordable programs into other zoning and those sorts of things. So they'll be continuing those discussions. <coughs> and that's it for my committee and liaison report for now. So I'll scoop over to Tom for our town manager report. Yes, I apologize. I've been out ill. Uh, three days this week, so I don't have much to report. Uh, just quickly, a, an update on the dredge project. Uh, the last status report I received was just before Christmas. The contractor uh, reported at that time they were two and a half weeks ahead of schedule, so I think by now they're probably close to wrapping up pro the project. Uh, I've, uh, over the holidays, I did go down uh, onto Western Beach and saw the dune replenishment that's going on and the dune shaping, so that project is well on its way to completion. and certainly pleased to report that. And also, for the benefit of council, and I don't mean to steal the thunder of the chairperson, uh, I was successful in arranging for some training for us all, for councillors, and I may have invite a number of my staff as well. Uh, tomorrow here in these chambers at 3.30, we have Phil Saussier from um, Bernstein Shore that's going to be providing Freedom of Information Act training, which is required of all public officials annually. Um, I think he's also prepared to provide some basic overview on executive mm -hmm. sessions, and this is really more for the council, and generally prepared to talk about our former government and those sorts of things. So this is at the suggestion and request of a uh, chairperson, and I think it's something that we might look to do annually. Uh, Phil is uniquely qualified. He does provide the FOIA training statewide, so he's certified in that respect, and I think it's a uh, that's a piece of information that might be helpful to some of my key senior staff people, too. So if you don't mind, I may extend that offer out to them as well. So again, tomorrow at 3.30, and I would expect within an hour we can wrap this up. So that's it for this evening. All right, on to council member comments, item number 11. We'll start on the other end with Mr. Hayes. Good evening, everybody. Um, I guess what I'd like to invite you, part of part of when I was running for council, what I really wanted to do is try to create an open process and really, you know, my opinion is we're kind of here to serve everybody that's out there. So please, um, it, it, as, as, as we're meeting, if, if things come up, if things you want us to put on the agenda, please let us know. Please get in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you about things that you want us to consider about Scarborough. So please get in touch with us and, and give us your thoughts. Thank you. And Mr. Blaze. No comments. All right. Mr. Donovan. Uh, I'll relate a story that probably all of us have experienced uh, uh, in the winter time. You know, recently retired, uh, time on my hand. Uh, I decided rather than going to the mall to take a walk, I would go to Walmart to take a walk, and was touring <laughs> touring the, the perimeter of Walmart when a gentleman passed me and said, "Geez, I was really disappointed in that boat that you cast," <laughs> and and I said, "Oh." Okay, and, and, and it just reminded me that there are people out there who they'd like to know why did you do that? And, and they didn't get an adequate explanation necessarily from the lack of exchange or dialogue that, that this process sometimes provides. And I want people out there to know that, and I've had this happen with the last uh, tax 
uh, a budget where people at, in my neighborhood said, why'd you do that? Why did you uh, proceed as you did? And we had a good exchange. And I want people to know that my our emails are all out there, phone numbers are out there, and I, I think it's better that you ask the question so that you actually know why, because sometimes the opportunity to fully understand just isn't presented, whether it's by the uh, newspapers or the discussion that we take. So I'm, uh, it just kind of reminded me of how important it is to, to let people know we're all prepared to, to have that sort of discussion to explain our, our views. Thank you, Bill. And Sean. Thank you. Um, Happy New Year, everyone. I hope you had a good holiday season. Uh, great comments. I did want to mention that, so we had a workshop this evening. First, I really wanted to thank the Historic uh, Preservation Group. That was very, very informative, um, very useful. One of my uh, dear to my heart organizations has one of those buildings on that list, which is the American Legion building down in Manson Libby Road. And uh, it's been a lot of things, including the pilot training barracks, but I'll have to tell you those jokes later, <laughs> um, back in the Roaring Twenties especially. Um, and then the second piece is that I think that the second workshop that we had shines a light on an opportunity for us to, while we might have the best intentions in crafting policy, sometimes the implementation of it um, just falls away and falls apart. And I think that, if anything, we've been shown that this probably is one of those policies, because I was actually hoping, by the time I heard the story, we should have given, I mean, personally, I would have said, given the manager the authority to move forward, accept the tax collection check from the resident or the owner of the property and just moved on. So um, I hope that we really look at minimizing government um, and making our processes more efficient. That's it. All right. So on to me. So I do just want to reiterate, as Tom mentioned, we do have training tomorrow at 3.30. Also, I think you'd be interested to know, um, Tom and I did meet um, briefly this evening to catch up. We will have the second part of our goal setting workshop. That will be on January 21st, which is a Wednesday evening, um, prior to our council meeting at 6. So we will be going over the goals. Um, just to review, uh, we'll have those sent out ahead of time to each of the counselors and we will go through our sticky dot process as well as a review of prior year goals. So now that we have that nice and firmed up. Can you um, get that done in an hour? Um, a, we are going to... <laughs> try. <laughs> we are going to try. Um, the other op op possibility is if we do have a light agenda, we may just forego the council meeting and, and have it as a goal evening um, if there's nothing sure. too, too pressing. So um, we shall see. We shall see. <laughs> um, and then last but not least, I did just want to share, I was trying to diligently find the document and I, and I had lost it, um, that our water company, our local water company, mm -hmm. um, has made a very gracious donation to the Scarborough Food Pantry. Um, and the sum of, I believe it was $1,000. Um, there were several communities that, that also received that, that the water district serves, but the Scarborough was also one of the recipients of that. Um, I, I think that was just absolutely outstanding of them. You know, in, in these times where, where resources are, are dwindling and, and shrinking and um, the services for the needy are being strapped, um, these local pantries and these local efforts become you know, more and more in need of help and support. So I did want to just give the shout out and, and a, a kind and generous offer and, and, and say that it's really appreciated. Um, and with that, I will actually wrap up my comments for this evening. And so item number 12 is adjournment. Could I, could I just ask for, I, I forgot to mention something. Uh, it, I was made aware from Chief Thurlow today that uh, Tony Tardo Sr. passed yeah. away. And uh, Tony, for those of you who didn't know, uh, was a well-established businessman in town, uh, all around terrific guy, just a prince of a man, served on this council, probably more influential in his later years as uh, the, the morning coffee clutch here at McDonald's. Um, I would often get an earful when I would stop in and catch and get my coffee in the morning, uh, but he was always on point, always a gentleman, and really cared about this town. Thank you. 
Thank you, Tom, for bailing me out that I forgot to do that. So, um, again, yes, we'd like to extend our condolences to the family. He was certainly a, a big figure here in town. So, um, again, thank you, Tom. And so now we are, really are, on to adjourning. So is there a motion? And a second? And all those in favor?